tell your position and uh, what your responsibility here in this university? My name is Linda Trinval, and I'm a professor in the Department of Asian American Studies at the University of California, Irvine. Yes. And my name is Thuy Va Den, and I'm a postdoctoral fellow and the project director for the Vietnamese American Oral History Project at UC Irvine. Yes. Thank you for showing us the, the special collection and also here we are right in this room. Can you explain when this one started and uh, the progress and your plan for future? Mm -hmm. uh, we're at the Southeast Asian Archive at UCI Langston Library. And the archive started in 1987. And the objective of the archive is to preserve the history of Vietnamese Americans, as well as Cambodian, Lao, and Hmong Americans. And what we collect here are books, um, masters and dissertation thesis, ephemera, photographs, letters, organizational records. We want to preserve the history of the immigrants and refugees who came here and built their communities as well. What caused you and university to do this? It was actually a vision of community members who recognized that their largest Vietnamese uh, community is right outside the doors of the university and that we needed to do something to preserve that history. And so they went to the university and suggested the idea of an archive and happened to be um, librarians here, particularly Anne Frank, who is collecting materials on Orange County, and she helped to start the process. But we collect materials not just um, Orange County or California, but across the country. Uh, can you tell that the response from the community, uh, how it was? Mm. Um, the community has been wonderful. Uh, I think they are learning about um, the archives still, uh, but they have donated their materials, their photographs, their personal family histories, and they recognize the importance of preserving this generation, particularly that first generation's history. If we don't keep those records, then we will not be able to uh, write that history. Um, researchers come here to research the experiences of the Vietnamese American community, and I think it's important because it really is a collection about American history. Uh, what do you think that it can be uh, can do better, or uh, your wish? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I would like more of the younger generation to understand what this uh, the significance of the collection is, um, and to encourage. Uh, them to help uh, with donating materials. Many of that first generation is getting elderly and um, we would like to collect as much of the material as we can from that first generation because I know a lot of people throw things away that they think are invaluable but they don't recognize the importance of their personal papers, their documents, their organizational records. It really will record how the community started, why we're here, what we've done to build um, uh, the little Saigons all over the country. And it really is about our contribution to American society. I see that you do a lot for community and university. Do you have any personal feeling uh, when you're doing all this? Um, when I was in high school, uh, I learned nothing. And even in college, I really learned nothing about Vietnamese Americans. Um, and it was really difficult for me to figure out where I fit into American society. All I was taught was about the Vietnam War and was very brief. And we had very negative portrayals of Vietnamese and Vietnamese Americans. And so it wasn't when I went to graduate school that I realized this is really a missing part of uh, the curriculum in kindergarten through 12th grade and also in college. And so my objective in doing this is that we make sure we tell um, a history that is about Vietnamese American from the Vietnamese American perspective. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, to you, I understand that you uh, start uh, a very wonderful program about oral history for Vietnamese American in this uh, university. Can you uh, elaborate it uh, to introduce that? Yeah. Sure. Well, the Vietnamese American Oral History Project um, started in 2011, and uh, many, many people had the vision for this um, years before I, I was hired to, to start the project. But the project is, the goal is to preserve the life stories of Vietnamese Americans in Southern California. And so to date, we have uh, about 80 interviews, oral history interviews online. and. 
One of the, the goals is, you know, in, in terms of not only preserving the community's history, but also to educate um, the next generation of oral historians so that they can become um, the folks who go out and collect these stories for us. And also to connect different organizations together so that we are doing this work, you know, as a team. Um, we have many partners in the community, including the Vietnamese American Heritage Foundation. So I'm very pleased to see over the past year this unfolding of um, a very collaborative and collective effort um, from the community and the university between the generations, between the media, um, to really try to document our history and use this process you know, as a learning process to see how we can strengthen the community as we do the work of preserving the history. What was the advantage and disadvantage while you doing this collection? Um, there have been so many um, moments where I, I realized that this is, a, this is a project for everyone and it needs the involvement of everyone in the community. So I, I think the, the biggest strength so far is that the support, the overwhelming support from people in the community who are willing to open up and share their stories, of course, the narrators, and then um, organizations who see the value, the inherent value in this project and contribute, uh, volunteers, you know, space. Um, and also the university starting to recognize the value in our community's history and really starting to lend the resources and, and do the outreach work. Um, a, a challenge, of course, is always funding. So this is something that I'm sure all organizations can relate to. Um, so we continue to work on this to build um, you know, a stronger archive. We need the funding to, to preserve it for hundreds and thousands of years, to have a digital repository, to have it online and available to the public. We need funding. When you do the oral history, what uh, was the most interesting in this collection you're going to tell? Oh, there have been so many incredible stories. And I've interviewed you know, people who are uh, very public figures and recognized by the community, to people who have lived very quietly um, 30 years and doing you know, the same work in a sewing factory. So it's a very broad spectrum of people that I've had the honor of talking to and learning from. Um, but one of the stories that really stood out for me was um, a, uh, it was a love story actually of um, one of our community members who started an organization called SAPVN or Social Assistance Program for Vietnam. And in, in a very long interview, he told, um, he told me about how he met his wife uh, during his time as a, a young man in a refugee camp. And so his wife, uh, who at the time was a, she's not Vietnamese, she was a re, uh, an, an aid worker working in the camps, and they met by writing to each other because she published, you know, poetry and and um, writings about this condition of the camps and her experience working with Vietnamese refugees. And he was moved by her words, so he wrote to her, and she wrote back. And they they didn't they were supposed to meet in camp, but instead. You know, they met in Westminster years later after he had migrated over. So, so I think stories like that, stories of um, moments of connection for me, when people were, you know, people's lives were changed by something small. Um, and at the time, it probably was just, you know, they didn't think anything of it. But now I think these are stories that can inspire a generation. So, seem like a, a happy ending story. Do you have any? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there were so many more um, stories that were quite um, uh, difficult for people to share. And so that's been one of the things that I've learned and grown from, is how to honor and respect um, when people have had moments of um, vulnerability as they share a story that's, that's difficult for them, losing a loved one, um, seeing half their family members lost during a, a failed attempt to leave Vietnam by boat, stories like that I've heard as well. And they've been, they've, um, They've impacted me um, as the listener, and so I hope that these stories will also continue to um, to move and, and inspire people to ask harder questions, um, to begin that co difficult conversation. Especially, you know, the generation that grew up over here uh, were born in the U.S., for example, and might not have the, even the language skills to to start asking their parents those questions. I really want them to start to try. How about your personal story? Can you share? Um, sure. My my family um, came t uh, as boat refugees. Um, we passed through refugee camps in Malaysia and um, the Philippines before we got to the United States in 1984. So I was very young. Um, I don't remember Vietnam at all. So for me, a lot of this is about discovering my own history. Um, I I grew up, you know, in a family speaking mostly Vietnamese. But when I came out 
um, in American society, I um, spoke only English, and so there was always this disconnect between the history that I thought only belonged in private, only belonged to my family, and then the history that I could speak out loud in public. So I really, in, you know, in this role, I've been able to really merge the two together and, and to make an argument for why our history should be part of public history, why it is part of American history. So I think that's where, for me, the personal and the, the political and, um, and the ideological, they all come together. What do you want to tell the non-Vietnamese out there about your collection? That this collection is for everyone. We're making it accessible by not just having um, interviews that are in Vietnamese, remain in Vietnamese. We're translating it into English with the hopes that as many people as possible all over the world will use it. So because it's online, we hope that researchers, and we do have a researcher from Tokyo uh, who's using the collection now as it's just gone live. So I, I really hope that everyone will use it as a resource for educational purposes and to deepen their understanding of the Vietnamese American experience. That's my hope. What is your um, short plan and long plan for the future. Yeah, the short-term plan is just to continue doing this work, you know, just keep uh, interviewing, training students to do interviews, go out there and build that bridge between UC Irvine and the Vietnamese American community right outside our doorstep. Um, the long-term plan is how to sustain this project so that it isn't just a few years, but that it can continue forever, um, whether it be the active interviewing or the preservation work, which is so important. It's the back and work that a lot of people don't see and don't realize how time consuming and, and how expensive it can be. So I would just like this collection to keep growing and growing. Thank you.